All right, so uh, picture this, you know, you're, you're driving into a parking lot and you park the car. As you get out of the car, somebody starts shouting at you from a distance like, Hey man, you're, you're double parked, you can't do that. What's wrong with you? You know better than that. People, I swear. Okay, you know, you, you don't want to fight with this guy, and so you own your mistake. And you try to get back in your car and fix the parking job. But then they start antagonizing you a bit, you know. Don't, don't get back in the car, you know. You did this, you know, you, you own up to it. Leave it like that. And so the person who wants to park next to you, they see, hmm, I wonder why I can't open my door. Oh, it's because the Buick decided to go past the white line. The nerve. I swear. Yeah. Um, you're one to talk. You're, you're literally parked in the fire lane, sir. I'm not parked. I'm in drive. Okay, okay, you see, what, what's the more towable offense here, you know? Barely touching the white line or parking in front of Walmart. Like, literally, in front of the front doors. I swear, like, what, what kind of example are you setting for the kids? I mean, you might as well be saying, Hey, don't smoke. Some people, right? Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Rob Rodriguez. Now, I, I want to wish everybody celebrating a happy Cinco de Mayo. It's, a, uh, believe it or not, very rare for me to actually study something before writing it into the show. Uh, but I did look up the history behind the, the celebration and why, why people uh, celebrate every, every year. Yeah, we don't want to be one of those people that just use the day as an excuse to have a margarita at noon. Well, anyway, happy Cinco de Mayo. Also, yesterday was uh, Star Wars Day. It was uh, May the 4th be with you. Now, I don't know if you, you'd wish a belated Star Wars Day, because I, I think it's one of those holidays like Valentine's Day where you, you just can't forget Forget it, or um, you'll hear about it later. Yeah. I can't believe you forgot Star Wars Day. I did not forget Star Wars Day. May 4th is also our anniversary, doofus. I will not sleep on the couch tonight. So every day we hear or see something that needs to be resolved. Um, but. You ever notice how usually we don't do anything to help fix the problem? Yeah, it's, it's like we all have this, um, somebody will take care of it, mentality, right? It's, it's like, what? There's an issue. What are, you, what are you coming to me for? What do you want me to do about it? Do I look like I have a hook to check out while the DJ revolves it? I'm not Vanilla Ice now. Yeah, you gotta love references from before your own time. And, uh, oh, we, we got another one in the same cut. Okay, cool. Yeah, so if Lassie were made today, what's that girl? Jimmy's stuck in a well. What do you want me to do about it? Call the fire department. I mean, Jimmy's a grown man, like, you think if he can get inside a well, he could climb right out of it, right? TV was so much more wholesome back then, wasn't it? Let's say you're going about your day, you, you head to the store, you're running errands, and you know, you notice somebody's mopping one of the aisles, but the problem with that is they didn't put down a wet floor sign. I mean, the aisle is obviously soaked, so 
anybody who uh, goes there is either not paying attention or completely oblivious, but the point is somebody could slip and fall and you didn't say anything. Like, you didn't think to say, hey, there, there should really be a wet floor sign there. Uh, he's got AirPods in. Okay. He'll learn. Yeah. But, you know, you don't like confrontation, but at the same time, you're like, somebody should do something about this. And, you know, that's what everybody's asking. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to post about it on my Instagram story. Dude. What else are you going to do? Rant about it on a TikTok? I feel like the, the ding thing with the text on screen has become kind of a staple here. I mean, sometimes we want to do something about it. Like, for instance, we have two movies coming out, Flash and Aquaman. They kept actors in the movie and fans are outraged. You know, they, they demanded these roles get recast, so they signed petitions and if they want to do it the easy way, they, they took to Twitter. But, you know, I, I mentioned this before, but just because a studio listened when fans demanded that uh, Sonic the Hedgehog get redesigned, now, now they think every studio will pull their film just because there was something you didn't like in the trailer. I mean, we spent years developing this project, and listen, when it's over, we want to see our families. Like, you know how hard it is to film out of the country during COVID? It's, it's pretty hard, man. Uh, uh, sir, it came to our attention that um, there's a continuity error in scene 26. We'll rent a gazebo in New Jersey, put a green screen around it, hire body doubles. Why does this always happen to us? And uh, how about this, for example? You know, content creators and different kinds of things online that have a following. I mean, people like it. They're, they're entertained by it. They like the posts. But, you know, usually it's, it's when they come across it or when they see it. Because if, uh, if I told you the amount of times that someone would walk up to me and be like, Hey, I saw your show. It's, it's great. Good job, man. Uh, thank you. Uh, are you subscribed? You know, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I only sat through two minutes of a video. Um, two minutes, but the show barely starts at two minutes. Yeah, I, I, I don't speak English. But, but you're speaking English now. Your humor is just too smart for me, okay? Okay, so uh, I thought um, I'd be serious for just a moment here. Uh, so as most of you know, uh, earlier this week, a writer's strike uh, started. And that means like all the late night shows are off the air. Like any scripted show is currently halting production and Saturday Night Live is uh, indefinitely on hiatus uh, during this time. Um, I just ask that, you know, the writers be, be treated fairly and uh, get, what they, get what they ask for during these uh, negotiations. And I'm sure most of you watching only know what a strike is because of that Spongebob episode. And uh, others are like, strike, what are, what are we talking about, bowling or baseball? No, but... Uh... Yeah, so hopefully this uh, strike gets resolved soon, and this is when I'm, I'm glad that I'm not union. I'm barely a writer in the first place. Well, we have a lot of show to fill, so that being said, I'm going to need a minute. Alright, let's kick off this year's singer-songwriter appreciation. Uh, my first guest was actually... Uh, featured in last year's uh, edition of this month of shows, 
We learn that she's a huge fan of Freddie Mercury and loves the 80s. Let's take a look at some of her work. We're going to talk about her latest single, Echoes, and much more. This is my interview with London's own Natalie Miranda. Well, last time you were on the show, uh, you just released your Greek single, uh, Back to Life, was coming out soon, and your uh, latest was Is This Love. Um, Overall, 2022 was a great year for you. I feel like it was a very busy year and it's, it's one in which I definitely fulfilled a lot of goals, basically. I, um, uh, I got to release my first Greek single, um, which is something I've wanted to do for many years. I released Is This Love, which is a song I wrote a long time ago and I've always wanted to release an 80s inspired song. So that was, it was great to get that done as well. And Back to Life, similarly, is something I wrote a long time ago, but it felt like it was the right time in my, in my career and in my life to release a song that speaks about empowerment and freedom and things like that. So um, it was a good year, yeah. And I, I did quite a few gigs as well, got to work with some different people. And I made a lot of, a lot more connections through social media, like yourself. You know, I, I, um, I got to know some really great people that have given me opportunities as well. So yeah, I think it was a good year. <laughs> so after Back to Life came out, I noticed a, a trend that there were different artists covering your, your songs. Um, like, how does that feel that, you know, songs that you wrote are so loved that you have different artists covering them and uh, making them their own? That has to be so humbling. You know, it's very easy to just take any any song, a cover song, you know, and just sing it verbatim exactly as the original artist has done but it's it's even better when someone puts their own spin on it that puts their own soul into it and you can hear a different take on the song you know it, it maybe it's not just a pop song maybe it can be like a bossa nova like one girl did um it's, it's very interesting and, and i'm so grateful for them for doing that um, we talked a bit about freddie mercury last time you were here um how does it feel to see uh, Freddie's legacy still going on strong in 2023? I think it's amazing. And, and it's, it's, I mean, I was very young when Queen were at the height of their fame, but it's even more astounding to hear little kids today singing, you know, like We Are The Champions. Actually, yesterday I just heard my neighbor singing We Are The Champions in the garden and he's like 11 years old. And I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. People are still singing the songs to this day there's still people discovering Freddie every single day all around the world and it's it's fantastic and I'm, I think he would be absolutely he'd be so happy <laughs> yeah and you know I saw Bohemian Rhapsody in theaters we talked a little bit about that as well uh did you uh think Rami Malek did did well as Freddie I really did and I, I was quite skeptical at first before I went to the cinema to see it because obviously being a Freddie fan, I'm I'm a bit biased, but I think he did a great job. He his mannerisms, the way he spoke, um, it, it was I was very surprised, and I think he he definitely deserved that Oscar. So you were on the radio recently. Um, you want to share uh, how that came to be? That was back in January, I think. The one we're talking about. Um, yeah, it was a thing called BBC Upload here in in London. Um, and it was completely, it took me completely by surprise because I'd sent my application off months ago. I totally forgot about it. And then I got an email on the morning of that show saying, oh, hey, by the way, we've chosen your song Back to Life to be featured on, on the show tonight. 
And I was like, oh my God, okay, great. You know, and they invited me to go into the studio, which was really cool. And um, it, it's just really nice to to have those opportunities, you know, and, and to know that someone actually listened to my song, which is a very rare thing, <laughs> you know, in the industry. Um, it was great, yeah. So I, I hope there'll be more of that for sure. Yeah. So uh, some congratulations are in order because uh, recently you had your name trademarked. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. Now, uh, recently Twitter and like all these social medias, they changed the guidelines on how you get the blue check mark. And I know you've been trying to get that blue check mark on Instagram for a while now. Um, do you think you're gonna, um, you think you're gonna get the, the check mark now that the guidelines changed? I, I don't agree with um, having to pay to essentially prove that who you are or to prove that you're somebody of note. I, I recently just had my Twitter verification taken away because I, I was a legacy verified artist. I've had it for two and a half years. And now because Twitter blues come into play, uh, they all just vanished. Everyone I know that's been legacy verified, even famous people, <laughs> they've just lost their check mark. And I refuse to pay for it, you know, it's just silly. Uh, and as an independent artist, the money I do have needs to be put into the right places, you know, not really. I, I don't need to prove to people that it's me. So um, I will not be paying <laughs> anytime soon for Meta. So uh, when writing a song, um, do you have the verse, the chorus, the bridge? Um, what's the difficulty level like? Like what's the easiest to write versus what's the, the hardest to, to write? That's an interesting question because for me it's not so much it's not so much that they're hard to write it's it's refining them because when I write it usually comes out in one go so I'll start I always start with a verse for some reason it's very strange and it and it just kind of comes out as a full structure um, at which point I'll sit back and I'll listen to it and you know sing it to see how it sounds and and then I'll sing it with my my producer and he'll be like maybe we just need to change that and maybe that note instead of that note that kind of thing so um it's never really a difficult process it's more kind of like uh just making it better i think all right let's talk about your latest single echoes uh it's wow um it's a it's a great song visually stunning absolutely beautiful um 100 percent uh two thumbs up what is, uh, what is the story behind Echoes? Echoes is, um, I guess it's inspired by, by my experiences growing up and wanting to compare myself constantly to other people, which is what a lot of us do nowadays on social media. We compare ourselves to other artists or, you know, whatever it might be. And, I wanted to write a song as if I'd gone back in time to give advice to my younger self. Um, and it's, it's, it's essentially me saying, you're going to be okay, you know. Um, and now I'm here, adult Natalie is able to forgive younger Natalie for things that she did or didn't do. And we're here together. So the lyric, I will be there in the mirror with you, is that I'm, I'm here with you now. And we, you know, like we won't forget what happened in the past, but we can control it now and it's going to be OK. Uh, and it's very cathartic. It was it was really important for me to release that. I mean, even the details in the video, um, they were so, so amazing. Uh, like. It, this just felt autobiographical. Um, do you do this with um, a lot of your songs? I guess it depends what the what the song is. Um, with with back to life and echoes, yeah. I mean, I guess there was some element. For example, in back to life, it was me running away from my old self, and echoes is. As I explained before, it's, you know, it's adult Natalie talking to younger Natalie. So I, re I really wanted to include the dancing because I did ballet for many years and then I stopped and I returned to it much later in life. Um, and I thought the song was just really fitting 
for some kind of expression in dance you know um it was all improvised none none of it was choreographed at all i made it all up on the spot um and that's what i wanted uh so yeah um those two songs especially are definitely autobiographical so the the cool thing about this song is um the title is not in the lyrics so how did you come up with the title Echoes. Exactly for that reason, I didn't want to have a lyric be the title because it would have been too obvious. You know, I, I, I thought about calling it The Mirror or Reflections or something like that, but it, it's just too obvious. And, and there are a lot of famous songs that use Mirror and Reflection and I wanted to do something just slightly different. So I literally Googled synonyms for uh, reflection and, and various other words. And among one of those words was Echoes. And I thought, oh, my God, that sounds really good because it's literally the echoes of the past. Um, so it kind of works. And, um, yeah, it just kind of fell into place. <laughs> All right. So, Natalie, where can everybody find you? Um, and what do you have in store uh, for the year 2023? The stage is yours. So I'm still promoting my latest single Echoes um, and the best place to find all my socials including my YouTube is through my website nataliemiranda.com natalie with the th and through that you can find all the socials and if you sign up to my website you'll receive a free download of Echoes as well and then I have a Christmas song that I'm working on as well which is really exciting <laughs> because I love Christmas um, so that would be you know late November or something like that so I'm keeping myself busy. <laughs> All right, in the description, uh, you can follow Natalie and uh, find her links in her mailing list. All, all in the description. Natalie, thank you so much for coming back. Um, I hope that we can meet again like this. Oh, thank you, Rob. <laughs> when there's no one in the mirror that you recognize. It's uh, time for that weekly list known as the possibility list. It's kind of like when you make macaroni and cheese, but you're all out of macaroni. <laughs> all right, this week's list is titled Six Companies That Should Not Make Gift Cards. All right, had to think a while on this one because so many Odd companies do have gift cards, so um, no hesitating with this list whatsoever. Number six, Dollar General. Number five, Greyhound Bus. Number four, you love it or you hate it. Number four, Crumble Cookies, but that's just an opinion. Number three, Mercari. Number two, Facebook Marketplace. And uh, number one, Six companies that should not make gift cards. Tinder. Yeah, you know, what if it was one of those rechargeable ones, you know? Okay, that's the possibility list for you this week. So, so these days it feels like AI is just everywhere you look. Everywhere you go, there's a, there's a heart, a hand to hold on to, you know? Really, any, um, any opportunity to make a Full House reference, take it. But yeah, you know, we have ChatGPT, and recently Snapchat released uh, their own AI. And I started talking to it, reluctantly. And to be honest, I'm conflicted. Like, it, it's weird, because, you know, every once in a while it's... It's, you know, the simple, hey, how you doing? Right? And then, you know, one day it's just going to be all, like, scary. Like, uh, let's say you just decide to, like, start 
venting about your annoying neighbor, and then they're like, oh, I I'm sorry to hear that. It'd be a shame if something happened to them. And then you're like, what? And then it replies back, what? Some technology just should not be as self-aware, I'm just, I'm just saying. All right, that is the show for you this week. You know how to follow me on social media. And until next time, don't you just hate it when you, when you graduate and they send you the wrong diploma? Like, this is for a Robert Rodriguez. Like, anyway, that's my time. See you next time.